Welcome to the IDP Hunting Grounds. I'm your host, Steve Hungarter. My Twitter handle is IDP Hunter. Uh, as you guys know, I'm the number four IDP ranker at Fantasy Pros. I'm also a writer over at the Fantasy Six Pack and IDP guys. Uh, what I wanted to talk about tonight is I actually wrote an article last year around this time. I wrote an article. The article was called uh, Late Round a dozen late round defensive backs that you can target in drafts. We're always preaching wait, wait, wait in drafts. And, you know, I kind of did that article out of fun. I kind of did that just to prove a point. You know, so IDP, IDP Plus does really good. Formerly IDP guys, but IDP Plus has, you know, they have a great archive that talks about this kind of stuff. Well, I kind of wanted to redo it for 2024. And, and I kept thinking about this. I kept thinking about this guys, and I'm like, what guest do I know that knows his rankings and knows his college ball as well as veterans plus football? So I brought in Big Steve uh, FF over there at RPO Football. What's going on, Steve? How you doing today? I'm doing good. Ready to talk some ball. Heck yeah, heck yeah. You just recently wrote an article too. Like I said, you're on my mind to do this article. The article was – all about when the draft slot corners, you know, production on it. And I just thought that was fascinating. What gave you the idea over there at RPO football to uh, what, what gave you the idea to come, uh, come and think about that, to do that as an article? I think that in general, people that play IDP when they, they began, they're afraid to start cornerbacks in their lineups because it's not counterintuitive. A lot of the best players are guys that, you know, you haven't heard of. They're not household names. And so I wanted to make it easier for, for people to, to understand what they need to look for uh, in players at, at the cornerback position for IDP and just make it a little bit simpler and easier uh, so that they can go and get guys that are really going to help add some value to those lineups. That's awesome. And, like, for the audience that's on Spotify – that can't see my screen. I literally just pulled up. It's a brand new article, freshly written. What was it? Hours ago, Steve, you just put this thing out and you put a lot of heart and soul into it, right? You know, you're talking about production and snap count and who to target, what have you. Um, I did something similar with defensive back safeties last year. Um, I don't know about you, Steve. Typically when I have a choice between a corner and defensive back and they're both played three downs, I'm going to the safety, most formats. Maybe maybe if you were to entice me and say, like, you know, 10 points of deflection or something, maybe it might change my mind. But 9 out of 10 times, maybe even 99 out of 100, I'm going, I'm going safety there. What says you? Do you have a do you have a preference with these guys? How do you how do you how do you what's your wherewithal? What's your thought process? Yeah, when it comes to defensive backs, I'm uh, I'm pretty biased. I, uh, I definitely go for safeties, and I go for strong safeties. I go for guys that are going to be in the I'm where backs go. I think we sure you're drafting as well as I am in these bigger leagues. Everybody's taking all the top players off the board, and they're going way too early with safety. I think that's a foolish strategy. What says you, Steve? Oh, for sure. If I'm going to go and take defensive players, I want to get my mm -hmm. edge rushers. I want to get my linebackers. That's your mean potatoes when it comes to IDP. Everything mm -hmm. else as far as safeties uh, and cornerbacks and defensive tackles, we can wait on that. Yeah, because let's see. You know, you got your Winfields, your James, your Hamiltons at the top of every draft. Bates had a good year. Baker's always good. I don't ever get one of those guys, Steve, because I'm waiting. And I know the expression a lot of us savvy owners know to wait on um, defensive backs. What if you wait, wait, you can stack a team better yet. What if you wait, 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 you can really stack a team. So it's just a question of kind of like Texas hold them. When do you fold? When do you keep going? You know, you're playing with your poker chips. So I guess this episode, what I wanted to do with you is I wanted to, when all the cards are on the table when all the cash and all the chips are in, you know, there's going to be guys left on the table, whether because people are scared of them whether because they don't know the name, maybe they don't know the scheme. Maybe there's some players out there that are worth taking, you know, when, say, 
after the top 25. Heck, maybe after the top 50. Heck, maybe some of these names these guys will never get to. But there's a lot of quality names each year. And I think the reason that is is because the position's so volatile from year to year. Who's to say? I don't think anyone's ever repeated. Maybe Buda Baker, Derwin James. Other than that, this this position is as is as flimsy as they come. Exactly. And like you said, I mean, 32 teams, two safeties apiece, some guys play in the slot. You're looking at, you know, 70 plus names that you can really turn to to start as far as defensive backs. So there's no point in, in burning early picks on a, a, on a defensive back. And there's nothing wrong with waiting for, you know, Derwin James, Lua Baker, all those guys to come off the board. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, even going to like, you know, tears down from that because the, the points per game difference, it's not enough to, to kill draft capital. And uh, we're, we're going to present some names here that, that people are going to get. They're going to be, you know, going to give them some serious value. Yeah, I'll give you one. And, and again, it's almost to your point. It's almost like whoever takes a defensive back first usually loses. It's like tag you're in, you know, uh, let me give you a name here that I think, this guy had stats, and I think people forget about him. Uh, let me paint a story for you real quick, okay? He's on the Vikings. Now, the way that team is schemed, Brian Flores, he's just blitz-tastic. I don't even know if that's a word. He's blitz He's blitzing things. He's using things, right? He uses this guy as a weapon. So he's not really a safety. I think they have him listed as a nickelback. Sometimes he's come off the edge, almost like that third linebacker because – the Vikings use one or two linebackers at a time. This guy's coming from all over the place. I can tell by your facial expression you kind of know who I'm going with here. But for the audience at home, the audience on Spotify that can't see my screen, me and Steve, we're going over some of these defensive backs here. This guy that I'm thinking of, I haven't revealed his name yet, he played 255 snaps in the box. Like Steve alluded to, that's, that's that premium linebacker spot, right? He was an extra linebacker on the field per fancy data. He finished second on this team in tackles. He finished with 116, mind you, for a safety. Come on now. For a guy that no one's even thinking about, okay? He was tied for first in forced fumbles, and he was tied for second in tackles for a loss. One, two, three scoring. You're getting some good points out of what I just said. Um, the reason this guy is so faded, because I had to think about it. I'm like, what am I not seeing? Or what are they not seeing to the untrained eye? People think that's a crowded defensive back room. It isn't. And this guy is, is a top player, one or two ranks in his position. He's used as a weapon. When he's interviewed, Flores goes, hey, what they go, what position do you play? And he says, hey, wherever Brian Flores wants me to go. He's all over the field doing linebacker-esque stuff. It's not Harrison Smith who gets drafted for he does. It's not Cameron Bynum who gets drafted for he does. The third defensive back off of this chart, which probably should be one, if not two, it's Josh Metellus. Josh Metellus is a sleeper steal. Steve, I'm in a 32 league right now. He went super deep. I think he went in the 19th round. I missed him by two picks. I was so mad because I thought I can get him. I thought I was smart, and that's what happens when you get a little too cocky. But Josh Metellus is a pickup. I almost play him everywhere, just about. And he's a younger guy. I play him almost anywhere. But that's definitely my number one I'm looking for when I'm in these leagues. Any thoughts there, Steve? No, I love that one. Uh, Josh Tellis is a guy. I, I actually had him rostered like two or three years ago. He's a player on one of my 32-team leagues where I couldn't quite get him off the roster because of salary cap stuff. But, you know, to see him blossom from being a special team uh, teams player – to being basically the X factor of the Vikings defense. Like you said, we think of Harrison Smith because he's been there for 10 plus years. And we think of Cameron Bynum because he was really productive last year. But as far as Metellus, he plays closer to the line of scrimmage than either of those guys. And I mean, that's, that's Brian Flores' dude there. So as long as Flores is there in Minnesota, I think Josh Metellus, any, if I'm not uh, if I'm not wrong, I, I believe he got a contract extension too, right? It's a two three year extension with Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so there you go. He got longevity in a tooth. Yeah, no great pick. Who who do you got if you're looking for a dozen late round guys that you can just let all the DB ones and twos off the board? Who who are you thinking here? 
So I was a really big fan of Richie Grant. I feel like I had him on every single dynasty team. And last year, uh, kind of halfway through the, the middle of the year, I just started seeing Richie Grant like dropping off on his points. Like he's, he's going from a guy that was getting me double digit points every week to now he's getting four points, six points. And I'm like, what the, what is going on here with this guy? And I looked at his uh, snap percentages and they, they started dwindling and, you know, just decreasing a little by little. And eventually DeMarco Hellams is the guy, a seventh round rookie out of Alabama. This guy just, he stole his job. I, I didn't, I didn't realize at the time, but he was stealing his job and he was taking the, uh, the safety position from Grant. And he's somebody that, I mean, we, we've got the draft coming up here. The Falcons could go and, and invest in draft capital, early day capital. But I, I think he played so well at the end of the year that, he's got a realistic shot to, to nail down one of those safety spots. And he's somebody that, that nobody is talking about. I mean, he's somebody you should be able to, to get for basically, you know, nothing, or you should be able to draft them and have zero because probably half the people think that Richie Grant's still starting. Uh, pro tip here for the audience at home. Um, when you're looking at depth charts in the off season, there's two places I go PFF and our lads. Don't go to the team. Don't go to ESPN. They're sleeping in the offseason. If you look at it right now, Helen is projected as the starter. And, and Steve's right. I looked at it in the middle of the season. I wrote waiver articles on Helms. I'm quite familiar with that pick. Thank you for bringing that one on. That's such a great pick. Helms outplayed the heck out of Grant. Grant went to the bench. And uh, people don't know this about Helms. Helms was a good draft prospect two years ago when he was coming out. He was. The problem with his draft stock, it kind of alluded to he came out, he was what, Alabama, right? Yep. Remember when um, Jalen Hyatt, when it was the Tennessee versus Alabama game? So the majority of those touchdown passes were on Helms that got scored those five touchdown passes. And that's kind of what, what kind of killed him. He was a pretty good prospect and he kind of dwindled down, but he gets to the pros. He worked really hard at it, real hard at it. Grant went to the bench. I feel dirty saying this and I'm probably going to get called out on my 32 team league in the off season. I knew what you were saying. I traded a second round draft pick, which in a 32 team leagues, nothing. I traded Richie Grant for a young up and coming Jordan battle. So sign me up for that. I got away with that early. No one knew about battle per se yet. That's why I love trading offseason. Everybody knew who Grant was, and I got over. So, hey, whatever. It is what it is. Hopefully they don't listen to the show and uh, and, and I get called out for it. But excellent pick, my friend. Um, as I'm up, we're our third one here. Not a whole lot of analysts with this guy. This here used to be Really athletic player. Uh, Justin Reed was making all the moves, what have you. Uh, the thing about Justin Reed was um, everybody knew he can play, but when he was with the Texans, he was really good. When he went to the Chiefs, maybe there was just so much other action going on. Maybe there was just other people to throw at. The last couple of years, people fell asleep on Justin Reed. And then all of a sudden last year, he started producing again. So now Justin Reed's a good quality player. He's a good quality player again. And people don't realize that, you know, you can get him back half of drafts when everybody else is gone. Okay, let me just read this to you. Last year he had 95 combined tackles. The year before was 83. The year before that was 66. But he's back to his Texans days when he was getting 83 tackles, 88 tackles. Again, he's a solid, decent player who will get you points in your in your leagues. I'm not saying he's a DB1, but a DB2, certainly you can get him on the back half when all the top names are gone. Uh, what says you, Steve? Uh, you got any other deep, deep players here? Oh yeah, we can we can go even deeper. Uh, <laughs> so, if you followed the the Jaguars last year, uh, they took a draft prospect who I thought was a day two guy. Uh, he's somebody I thought he was going to go in the second round, and somehow he fell to the the fifth round, and he gets scooped up by Jacksonville. 
He does well in the preseason, but he sits on the bench because, you know, they've got Rayshon Jenkins at the time and Andrew Wingard and, you know, they, they had uh, Andre Cisco, So just a bunch of dudes that, that were in the, uh, the safety room. And towards the end of the year, uh, Antonio Johnson gets a chance to play. Had an interception, I believe an interception return. And uh, he's somebody that, I mean, his coverage stats were solid, and he produced IDP-wise. He was putting up playing tackles. And right now, with Rayshon Jenkins in Seattle, he signed with the Seahawks. Uh, he's, he's somebody that could very possibly be the uh, strong safety of, of Jacksonville going into the 24 season. And uh, is anybody really talking about Antonio Johnson? Nope. That's a good one. That's a deep one, my friend. Mm-hmm. That, that that's going to make some noise, and you can get him here. Here's another name, and maybe he's not really being looked at because I can't pronounce the damn thing. So I'll wait to the end. I'll give you a little history. I can't pronounce this thing. I'm not even going to try. This guy plays for Lions. Okay, he was moved from cornerback to safety. He didn't even crack the starting lineup till like week 14. And for guys like me and you that watch football, that was the moment. That was the moment when he really took off. If the audience at home wants to look this prospect up, feel free to go on Twitter. There's so much posted about him on Twitter, videos, what have you. But that week um, that week 15 game especially against Denver, he had two pass defenses, a sack, and a forced fumble. We're like, holy cow, who is this guy? I love Steve in the middle of the season. And maybe it bleeds over into the playoffs and we get to see who these guys are because they don't have a full body work yet. But he ended up getting two passes, two sacks. He was the NFC uh, and, uh, NFC uh, player spotlight, you know. Uh, the following week he played it with Dallas. So now we're on his third game, third game ever. He records his second pick. So he's definitely being used as a weapon. Um, my problem with Detroit, as you know, they have that three safety rotation. Well, guess what? Not anymore. C.J. Johnson, he Garner Johnson, he's going back to the Eagles. So there's definitely a place for this guy to play. He's definitely an impact player. And believe it or not, this name here, Ifeotu Melanfu, I tried it, I-F-E-A-T-U, M-E-L-I-F-O-N-W-U. He's a waiver wire darling. That 32-team league I alluded to, I got Jordan Battle on one side, I got him on the other. <laughs> I'm just – I'm good. I'm locked down for years with those guys. But I love this kid. I love what he brings, and I love the points he gets us. Again, this is late, late, late in drafts. No one's looking. They can't even pronounce the names to kind of put them in their queue when they're drafting on sleeper. <laughs> what says you, Steve? Yeah, no, uh, I'm going to take a crack at it here. I think it's a Fatu Melifonwu. You're braver than me. You know, YouTube <laughs> is very unkind with, with grammar. You know, it's usually when my videos, that's the only thing I really get gigged on. Oh, you misspelled this. Guess what? I don't care. By the time I start pronouncing right, these guys will be out of the league, what have you, you know? But, yeah, that kid yeah. is a killer, man, and he does it all. Sacks, yeah. fumbles. I have a deeper name than this coming up, too, and, and he seems like the same kind of, kind, of, kind of player. But those are the ones I look for, especially in younger ones when we're looking at breakout year two, guys, because we don't, we don't really know – what that player like like Justin Reed wasn't a hard one. We know what he does. He's athletic. He's back there. He's doing stuff. You know the honey badges. We kind of know those kind of players, but we don't really know what a year two, year three is going to do until they do it. You know. So, mm -hmm. what says you? Do you got another one of these guys for us? This is our fifth one, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, and just to go back on Melifon Wu, I mean, huh? here's the point totals from that streak at the end of the year when he was starting those games. Uh, thir and this is in IDP 1, 2, 3. Um, 35 points against Denver. 42 Ooh. points against Minnesota. 15 points against Dallas. 15 points against Minnesota. So the, the worst week, it was a, a, you know, a fantastic week at 15 points. 42 points, that wins you, uh, you know, a game for you right there. That That's a difference maker. And mm -hmm. I mean, the nice thing is that this guy just – he broke out. There was a place for him, like you said. Gardner Johnson's gone. And there's really nobody else there to step on his toes. I, I think that's a great, uh, a great name. 
See, this is so much nicer than the cornerback video because, like, at least with safeties, I could apply logic. Well, he's going to be here in the corner. I just don't know. And I would hate. Like, if you beat me with that guy and he scores 40 points, okay, you plotted that. But if somebody yeah. beats me with a cornerback and he puts up 80, I would be so frustrated because how the hell do you even – how do you plan for that? You know what I mean? So, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll give you a name that I think he's a little bit more popular than some of the other ones we've done. But still, uh, Taylor Rapp of the Buffalo Bills, nice. you know, uh, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer were the stalwarts in that room for the longest time. They're both gone. It's now Mike Edwards and Taylor Rapp. Rapp played last year for the Bills and he got some time there at strong safety. He was productive. He he was averaging, you know, four or five tackles a game. And he, he's somebody that, because we've seen it last year, we, we know how he's going to fit into their defense. We don't have to, you know, project. Like, we've seen him play the position. He did a good job with it. They gave him a three-year extension. And they mm -hmm. basically, you know, so that's the type of player that, you know, everybody's heard of Poyer. Rap was like on the on the Rams, and you know he, he yep. got moved from you know he he left there and took a one year deal with Buffalo. Like he's he's not as sexy of a name, but he's somebody who's going to produce and and give you. I mean he's a, he's a starting safety two, uh, at least three, or maybe a flex guy. But he's somebody that you could start and have zero issues with. And you know what? With Rap, a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, he played all sixteen games. He only started. He only started in four of them. That's it. And, you know, so he only got meaningful time, what, a couple times this year. Plus, you know, those 50 tackles you alluded to, 33 were solos. Uh, you know, not much for the INTs, not much for the four solos, but the leagues we play in, give me them tackles. You know, he's definitely going to get opportunity this year. I like rap as well. I had him. I had him as one I was thinking about. And you said it too. Opportunity is key. He's got a three-year deal now. You know, this guy does. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely looking good here. Um, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. This next guy I have, he plays on the Saints. With Jordan Howden of the Saints, he actually appeared in 16 games, but he didn't have a major role because – he was covering down. Marcus May kept getting hurt. Honey Badger's on his way out to retire. He had 43 tackles. He had a sack. He had five passes defended. He can get you a lot of different ways. He was just a rookie figuring it out. Again, with May not getting signed back, no, sir. He missed, what, 13 games in the last two years? No, no thank you on that. Jordan Howden is the sole owner uh, of that position now. And if you look at last year, too, because I was pulling up some of his stats, he didn't start getting meaningful work till the end of the year. Uh, week 13, 98% snaps. Week 14, 95. Week 15, 100. Week 16, 100. 17, 30. And then, you know, of course, week 18, you know, they're already out of it with 43. So he only had a couple games last year, and I think he had 200% games before that. So give him five games of meaningful body of and he still produced you meaningful points. And he and he's, you know, he's shown he can be a high impact player. You know, 43 tackles in five major games. I will take that all day long. And I will wage the upside to this younger rookie kind of player will stay healthy throughout a full entire season. But he's a guy I'm looking at later on drafts because I know I know how late these safeties can go. Yeah, Jordan Howden uh, is somebody I'm very familiar with because he went to Minnesota. That's my alma mater right there. So we're basically safety you now. Everybody wants to be, you know, wide receiver you. But with Tyler Newbin coming out as the number one safety for Minnesota, we're basically we, – we can claim that now as safety you. Um, but, yeah, Howden, somebody – a lot of my taxi squads. He's somebody that, like you said – He's a talented player. Uh, the Saints are transitioning that secondary. Honey Badger is probably, you know, going to be gone the next year or so. And he flashed at the at the end of the year, and he's going to get a chance to to start. And I mean, he's he's somebody that's not uh, widely talked about. So, yeah, Jordan Howden is a super deep name. I mean, uh, like thirty two teams here, but even in a sixteen team or a twenty four team, I I'd be happy to to stash him. There you go.
Who you got for your next guy, Steve? Okay, I'm going to go back to the AFC South. And here's somebody that only started uh, one full season at Strong Safety. Uh, Nashville Strong. This is uh, Tennessee Titans' Amani Hooker. Uh, so right. 2022, he started to get some snaps there. Last year was his first full season. Now he missed uh, four games because of a leg injury at the end of the year. He, uh, he went on IR. So he played 13 games, uh, still 85 tackles, and almost he had 69 of those as solos. That's crazy. That's that's awesome. 69 out of 85 tackles as solos. And uh, this is somebody that he started on special teams, worked his way through. Uh, Kevin Byer got dealt to the, uh, the Eagles. They have uh, Edmonds there now, and Hooker is going to play strong safety. They don't. Uh, they they didn't sign anybody in free agency. There was talk about uh, Justin Simmons landing there. Mm-hmm. He, he, he's somebody that I mean we don't know a landing spot, but it hasn't happened yet. So I mean, until then, if we if we took uh, seventeen games, Ryan, we kind of just uh, took his his statistics over the course of a full season. You're talking about a hundred and eleven tackles. I mean, where would that put him in safeties? I mean, he'd be a safety one candidate. Exactly. And, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, we're already, we're already, what do we do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're, this is going to be the ninth player deep and we're not even really, we're not even uh, scratching the service. Uh, For my ninth player here, you just said his name. I would go Justin Simmons as well. Justin Simmons should not be this deep on the list, but if you're drafting right now, I mean, it's not nothing. I'm not saying anything courageous here, you know. But if you're drafting right now, he's just sitting out there because people don't know where he's going to fall. Well, he's going to play again, guys. How do I know he's going to play? Because that's all he this guy does. He's a he's a baller. He's a four time, uh, a second team All Pro. And he what he has? I think uh, two Pro Bowl nods uh, with himself. He's always around the ball, always around the field. And the only reason the Broncos did not re-sign him. Is they're rebuilding. They're cutting that whole team. They don't want to be stuck in a bill. He's going to land on a team, probably a playoff team, a really good team, and he's going to go off. So go ahead and draft him as your DB3 and expect DB1 late side value. Uh, again, there's not a lot of analysts I need to make there. I'm just so shocked I'm playing in all these leagues right now, and Justin Simmons is just following me late in drafts. Yeah, it's like you said. It's the it's the whole uncertainty where he's going to play, what his role is going to be, what his role is going to be. He's going to be a full time starter. I mean, he's he's thirty years old, thirty one. It's not like he's he's forty. And the guy's an absolute stud. He's going to produce wherever he goes. And just because there's some, um, we, we don't quite know all the details there. People tend to kind of shy away. But that's any player when it comes to fantasy football. For some reason, we just get we get scared when we don't know what team they're on. Let's see. We went. We this is the tenth player. So you got two more shots here, and I got one more. Let's try to impress the audience. How deep? It's like limbo. Remember, uh, was it limbo? How low can you go? Let's see <laughs> who who you got coming up, Steve. Well, can I take the rest of the uh, the Lions safety room? That's two guys right there. <laughs> go right ahead by all means go ahead you get a bonus audience <laughs> okay well I, I i think i'll go with technically kirby joseph because i think brian branch might be because he was a second round pick last year it'll probably go sooner but both of those guys are viable kirby joseph i mean I don't know if people are going to shy away from him because he had a couple of really nasty hits last year. I mean, he's, he's got a reputation now. I think he's a dirty player in the league because he took out uh, TJ Hawkinson. And uh, I mean, the guy just, he's a playmaker. The guy's produced in fantasy last year, full-time role. Uh, and I think he was over 200 points in IDP one, two, three scoring. Uh, Brian Branch was over 200 for sure. He took almost all their, uh, you know, a lot of their nickel snaps. And that, that's how I see it. I, I see uh, Joseph is the free and Melifon Wu playing strong safety and Branch being in the slot. And those, all three of those guys can cook in that defense. So, uh, I mean, 
whichever one of those players drops the the furthest is the guy that I would target from there. And it's it's probably your your guy, uh Melifonwu, but I mean those other two guys are definitely in play. And then let's not forget the guy that didn't get re-signed, uh, Tracy Walker. He's flown out there. He's had moments there. There's so many guys in that in that in that in that Detroit Lions. And you know, teams, whoever's there, whoever they're gonna try to pass on them rather than throw on them. Oh, he just kind of came in out. Uh, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. Um, I got a guy from my last pick here. Um, this guy here, okay. Um, he's kind of bounced around the league a little bit. Um, every once in a while, you want to target the history. You want to target like the specimen of the player. He's six foot one, two ten. That's your classic safety kind of build. Um, I went back two years ago. I went back to two thousand twenty-two uh, when he signed with the Lions. He had 14 games, you know, 13 or more starts. He recorded 96 tackles. In leagues I play, and that's what I'm looking for. He only had one interception, but that's kind of his game. He goes to Miami. When he goes to Miami, he was kind of like a baby uh, Jamal Adams type. Hey, we're going to keep you close to the line of scrimmage. We're going to make some tackles. We're going to do some stuff. He started 15 games, and uh, he made 82 tackles and interception, career high, seven pass defense defenses um the problem is what miami wants to do players like him they're kind of getting to be an afterthought so deshaun elliott is the name deshaun elliott signs with the broncos you know and i know the broncos are going to be a trash fire next year you know and i know teams are going to put buckets and buckets of points up because i'm not really i'm not really impressed with that quarterback position so there's going to be people in key positions for the Broncos that are going to excel, i.e. inside linebacker, i.e. strong safety, that sort of thing. So I'm expecting a similar type year, buckets of tackles out of this guy. They're going to find ways to put people on the play uh, on field and get use out of their out of their out of their key attributes. And he's a cheap player to own. Not only cheap in real life, but cheap and fancy. I can get him late, late in drafts, best ball drafts right now. He's one of my, I guess. Last four round, four or five round pick. So Deshaun Elliott's a name that people forget about, and he's going to be a starter in the NFL. And he's going to log snaps. Nope. Yeah, that's. I mean, some of these guys are. I mean, they all they do is is produce year in year out. They just do it from place to place. <laughs> you know, they sign these one year deals. But I mean, Deshaun Elliott's a name that we that we know. It's just he hasn't found a you know long term home. But he's somebody that that definitely can deliver. There, um, I don't know if you have any deep deep punts, but I mean that's that's a good enough list. There's a guy I just did the uh, team preview over at um, at the fancy six pack. Uh, there's a guy named Jalen Mills. He used to be a corner for the Eagles, mm-hmm. and they convert him with New England. One thing New England does well is they convert people. He's playing safety. If the Giants don't clean that up because they have a lot of holes they got to fill, you might end up getting a cheap starter floating around back there. Um, Jalen Mills I'm not too impressed with, but I do know he can tackle and cover, which is what you want. But that would be like my deepest of deep, like 64 team kind of stuff. But uh Anybody else that we didn't highlight that, that you're kind of interested in or you kind of thought about? I mean, you went Hellums right from the jump, so I know you're going deep. I think we kind of killed this list. But is there anybody else out there you want to give attention to? So as far as uh, somebody that – okay, so he's not super deep in terms of, like, you'll know the name, Jair Brown from yeah. the 49ers, but he's somebody like – to me, Hufanga is, is the big name there. But when this guy played, he had five solo tackles for, let's see, three of, of those last five games. And in the Super Bowl, he had seven solo tackles and 11 total. So, I mean, he's somebody that, hey, he's going to get a chance to start. He's somebody that uh, John Lynch personally stumped for. And he knows safeties. I mean, he's a Hall of Fame safety. That's somebody that, even though technically he's he's played a year, um, he didn't play enough where I think you could probably trade for him and get in before that window closes where he really blows up. He's somebody I'm keeping an eye on. And, and you know, Hufanga's hurt, so I'm kind of interested yeah. in how that plays out. In, in a couple of weeks, I actually got uh, an author who wrote a sports injury book. He's a doctor, 
and I was going to pick his brain as the season goes and be like, hey, what do you think about this injury? What do you think? Because I don't have a background at it. I just kind of take people's advice. You know, how long do you think? you think this guy's ready to be healed? you think this guy – you know, and everybody knows offense, but defense, we have the most flukiest of injuries. Like, we'll start with defensive linemen with their arm, fingers, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then linebackers, they're like running backs, those ACLs, those MCLs, and defensive backs, anything in their ankles, feet, what have you. So I'm kind of interested to bring him on, pick his brain a little bit, you know, different assets of the show. Um, on that note, too, Steve, I just wanted to thank you for coming on. Thank you for talking about your work. Thank you for going over my work because I was really thinking about – putting that into an article this year, but you know, the off season goes so quick and now we're in draft season. Now we're in the grind of that. Um, for the audience that wants to see more of Steve, check him out on RPO uh, football, but also we're going to get together again. We're going to do an article for the six pack. And it's going to be an expert uh, Royal rumble type draft with all the, all the best experts we could find. We're going to have Hulk Hogan in there. Steve's Hulk Hogan. We'll have the Ultimate Warrior in there. We're going to have Sting. We're going to have everybody in there we can find. We're going to do, what, a 12-team three-rounder? That's what we're going to do, Steve? Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm kind of afraid now that we let all the, you know, cats out of the bag here. We're going to get mm -hmm. sniped all the, <laughs> the, the entire draft, huh? I kind of do it for myself, like, because I like to know how the players move and the pieces think and all that. But you know everything we did. As soon as draft day happens – I forget what it was before Madden. For there used to be a board, my, my electric football, I think it was called. You put all these guys in position, and as soon as you turn on, it's like zzz, they just go their own way. You know, landing spots are going to change a lot of that. I think we have an advantage going into this thing. I really do because we kind of know where the players are, and I think you have an excellent advantage. The fact that you were at the collegiate, the collegiate bowl, and you were scouting these guys, and you were checking them all out, and you kind of got some of these players up close and personal. Exactly. No, it's it's definitely going to be exciting to see where everybody lands and specifically regarding, uh, you know, defensive backs. I think it's a really solid uh, safety class. I mean, there's not a ton of I mean, there's probably going to be one or two guys that go in round one, but mm -hmm. some names to, to look out for that I really like. I mean, Cole Bishop and Javon Bullock. And uh, Tyke Smith, these are all guys I think will find a role at the next level. Uh, Jaden Hicks uh, is a strong safety candidate. I mean, these are all guys I think that are, are going to be useful for IDP. So I'm excited to see where they land. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to start draft them, drafting them, honestly. <laughs> Thanks again for coming on, Steve. And Steve, tell the audience where they could find you and what are you working on next? Honestly. At the, and I'm gonna do a draft recap article after uh, after the draft for that. Heck yeah, and we'll catch Steve on the draft recap, and and maybe we'll get you to come back on the show, and we'll go over some of that stuff. Again, thanks again. Y'all have a good week.